Thank you. Thank you so much. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Hi, everyone. Uh, we have the pl pleasure to host this workshop with Zach Ice. He's developer advocate uh, at Chainlink Labs. He's a team member. So um, let's let's start, Zach. Whatever you want. Awesome, Mark. Thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, my my video is still off. I don't know if you guys want me to to do this without video, but uh, either way, it works for me. I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right, everybody seeing that? Yes. Okay, cool. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Zach Ayush, and so today I'm gonna go through a demo um, deploying Chainlink smart contracts and we're gonna use it, uh, deploy them using Remix and Hardhat. So, uh, yep, uh, as Mark introduced me, my name is Zach Ayush. I'm a developer advocate. Um, and a developer advocate is someone who helps engineers and really anyone building with a technology, in this case, Chainlink, be successful and make sure they have an awesome developer experience. I've been a fan of and followed Chainlink since 2017. And I was a big fan when I found it back then because I saw it was solving an important problem in the space that would shape the future of the agreements and the internet in general. I stayed involved with the project, keeping up with it, and eventually became a community advocate, helping out uh, the community and spreading the word on Chainlink. And eventually decided I really wanted to help um, from a tech side of things. So became a developer advocate, and uh, that's where I am today. So I'm gonna keep the presentation part of this short. I'm just gonna cover uh, Chainlink services and give you an overview of what they are. And we will talk about where you can learn some more if you need to, and then we'll go right into the demo. So I wanna cover um, what Chainlink offers for DeFi, our decentralized finance. DeFi is essentially taking the logic of any financial agreement that you would maybe do at a bank, for instance, uh, lending and borrowing or exchanging them, exchange of currencies and uh, making them smart contracts. Well, to have effective DeFi contracts, you need price data. And you need that price data in a decentralized secure way. As you know, that's what Chainlink does. Um, so in Chainlink, we have what's called data feeds. Um, Chainlink, the Chainlink project has gone ahead and found many of the best blockchain node operators on the planet and combined their prowess um, to build these data feeds. These are basically decentralized on-chain reference points that can be considered source of truth for various currency pairs. For instance, you can find things like ETH USD, Bitcoin USD price, or even things like uh, stocks, you know, Tesla USD price, and use those prices to create interesting smart contracts. Um, so you can find these data feeds on data.chain.link. Um, each node in the network independently gets data from some of the highest quality data APIs and reports their answers on chain. You can see the answers that each provider reports. So everything is transparent. Uh, like I said, many of the many most popular cryptocurrency or fiat currency pairs are currently supported. And you know, the best part is everything is transparent because of the nature of the blockchain and available on GitHub. So you can always create your own feeds. Why is it so important to use uh, feeds? Well, many projects have already been attacked or hacked and literally lost millions of dollars due to insecure or centralized oracles. And by using a data feed, you are already using some of the most secure and decentralized oracle networks that are available helping protect your project um, from the threat of an Oracle attack. You know, DeFi is uh, one of the major areas uh, growing, still has a ton of momentum and knowledgeable people working in the field. And Chainlink supports some of the top projects. Uh, many of the top projects you see on this list, uh, 
I took yesterday uh, evening, um, Chainlink supports and, and, and secures their projects. You know, at the moment, there are billions of dollars in assets and decentralized finance, which is awesome, but also means we have to be responsible and uh, use the most secure technology that we can. So an example of some projects that are using these decentralized price fees to secure their projects and some of the value locked up, you can see um, here, you know, we have synthetics, sushi swap, set protocol, Aave. They range from various different use cases from, you know, DEXs to lending and borrowing. And these numbers are just going up day after day. So those, those are our data feeds, you know, essentially, again, they allow us to get secure and trusted price data and other types of data on chain and available for you to use in your smart contracts. And of course, we'll be using these uh, later in the demo. I also want to talk about the Chainlink VRF, um, verifiable randomness function. So the Chainlink VRF um, brings a method to generate provably random, num random numbers on chain. And you may be asking yourself, why can't I just generate that on chain? Can I just use maybe like the block hash from a, a previous block or connect to a random API? But all of these create security issues on chain and, and can be gamed by actors such as miners or uh, if you're using an API, a single API can be gamed by that API. Uh, so the Chainlink VRF allows a way to access secure and provably secure um, randomness on chain using um, some really advanced cryptography. So an example of what we're seeing um, VRF used a lot right now is in the NFT and decentralized gaming space. So many of you may be familiar with NFTs. If you're not, those are non-fungible tokens. Um, you know, you can think of them as art pieces. Sometimes they're Tra trading cards, um, but for this example, we'll say trading cards. Perhaps you're creating a trading card application and you wanna provide your users a certain guarantee that uh, the NFTs will be generated um, at a certain rate. So maybe you have an ultra rare NFT trading card and you wanna assure your users only one in a 10 chance that you get this card on um, when you open this NFT card pack. Well, Chainlink VRF can be used to give your users the, the security guarantees and the trust and transparency that they really are getting those um, random stats and they're not being gained by the creators or any other source. One of our latest uh, services is the Chainlink Keepers. So an interesting thing about smart contracts is they actually can't execute their own code without an external actor initiating that code. So if I wanna run a method on a smart contract, someone physically has to go run that code. Um, when we do this, if we, for instance, you made a time-based smart contract that you wanted to run every day or every 10 minutes, you would have to actually go there and do that yourself or create a bot, which creates points of centralization. And as we know, points of centralization defeat the awesome properties that we want out of blockchains. So Chainlink Keepers allow smart contracts to have functions that run in an automated and decentralized way. So you can contract the Chainlink Keeper service to run your smart contract every 15 minutes and you can have very, very secure guarantees that that will actually happen. So an example use case of uh, Chainlink Keepers um, other than time is liquidating DeFi loans. So we talked about DeFi and borrowing lending a little bit and how that's a big use case. Well, most of the loans in DeFi right now are what's called over collateralized loans, meaning they require more collateral than the money taken out in the loan. And if that collateral falls below a certain 
threshold, you need an external actor called a liquidator to come in and liquidate that loan and take the underlying collateral. A lot of current solutions are centralized or not very reliable. You know, in terms and in times of high gas, liquidators may be disincentivized to actually um, liquidate those loans. So chainlink keepers can be used in, for instance, like Ave loans to come in and guarantee that loans will be liquidated when uh, the collateralization ratio falls below a certain threshold. And these conditions can be customized almost infinitely uh, to your desires. I just wanna go over a little bit of where you can learn more um, on Chainlink, you know, after this um, talk and demo. So uh, the docs are, of course, a fantastic place to learn about developing with Chainlink. Um, I highly recommend following the beginner to advanced tutorials that we have on there to go from zero to hero. Um, and the docs are now open source. So if you're browsing the docs and you see a typo or you feel like something could be done better, feel free to make an issue or a um, pull request and get credit for those changes. Uh, we really wanna encourage everyone to improve the docs as they're reading. The blog is another great place to get easily digestible articles on how Chainlink works and fun guides on how to build specific Chainlink projects. One of my favorites and one of the most popular uh, blog posts on the blog is the 77 smart contract use cases enabled by Chainlink. So if you're, you know, been listening to these Chainlink talks and you think, hey, this technology is awesome and I know it can be used in a lot of places, but I just can't put my finger on where I want to use it or where I think I can make an impact. I highly suggest reading this blog. Um, it has a lot of cool ideas on where smart contracts and uh, chain link smart contracts can make a huge impact. Um, you know, and who knows, you could read this and this could be the spark to be the idea that leads you to become the next Aave or Synthetics with billions of dollars locked in your protocol. And if you're more into visual demonstrations like uh, we're having today, maybe the Chainlink YouTube is a great place to go for you. Um, you can find all kinds of engineer tutorials and developer workshops um, recorded on there at your leisure. You can, you know, if you get stuck at a certain place, you can rewind and um, really just watch and see how things are being done. Another resource available for those of you that may already have some developer experience and are used to working in a local development environment, uh, we have what's called the Chainlink Smart Contract Starter Kits. So these are pre-built local environments that have Chainlink contracts and tests that make um, developing a lot easier. We have them in uh, popular smart contract frameworks like Brownie, Truffle, and Hardhat. And we'll actually be using hard hat in the upcoming demo. So um, we'll expound a little bit more on that. And with that, you know, I wanted to keep it short and sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the demo. And we're gonna start the demo by deploying some Chainlink smart contracts with Remix. So if you don't know what Remix is, um, it's a popular web-based IDE, our integrated developer environment for making and deploying smart contracts. Basically, you can think of it as a website. It just has a lot of nifty tools for making smart contracts. And this is where we're going to start today. So um, a little bit of what I have installed on my computer right now. Um, I have a MetaMask extension installed, uh, testnet ETH in my MetaMask, and we're going to be deploying things to the Covan network and testnet link in MetaMask. Um, you can, I don't have the faucet link on there right now. Uh, I guess that got somehow deleted off of there, but um, you can always find the faucet for testnet link in the docs, and I may even show you uh, where you can find it. So let's go ahead and move into the docs and get started with the demo. Okay, so here we are in the uh, Chainlink docs. Um, in the left toolbar, it's sectioned off 
by product and what you may be looking for. So we have an introduction section using price feeds, uh, randomness, keepers, and another product actually in the API, which uh, we can cover if we have time. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start with price feeds. So, you know, those data reference points we were talking about in, um, earlier when we were discussing DeFi in the presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click get the latest price. Scroll down and you're gonna see this example code on here. And this is just a very simple example product that uses uh, code that uses the chain link uh, data feeds. We're gonna click this button down here, deploy this contract using Remix. So Remix is opening up and boom, you see we have the exact same uh, code sample now in Remix. Um, just to go over the code a little bit and kind of explain what's going on here, you can find the Solidity version at the top. Um, actually, let me make sure this is big. Uh, yeah, so you can see the Solidity version at the top that tells the compiler what version to use. We're importing one chain link library, the aggregator v3 interface. This is the library you're going to always want to import if you're going to use price feeds or data feeds. We then define the name of the contract, um, in this case, price consumer v3. And the next important part here is the constructor. The constructor initiates what we call the state variables, which is where we store information in the contract. In this case, we have one state variable called uh, price feed. It's an internal state variable, which means it can only be accessed from this contract. Um, and it sets it to point to the ETHUSD price feed on Covan right here. This is the address of that feed. And we have one method uh, function, get latest price. And like, just like it says, the purpose of this function is to get the latest ETHUSD price and uh, display it on the uh, on Remix. So let's go ahead and compile and deploy this contract onto um, the Covan testnet. So if we go here, we can click compile price consumer v3. It's gonna compile. We're gonna get a couple informational warnings. These aren't um, showstoppers, they're in yellow, we're okay. We can ignore those. And then we're gonna click the Ethereum diamond symbol over here. And we're gonna to wanna to switch our environment to JavaScript, oh, sorry, Injected Web3. It's gonna ask us to connect with MetaMask. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to account one here. Connect. Okay, so as you see, Covan network is showing and on my MetaMask, I have it selected to Covan. It's not popping up here, but yeah. So in MetaMask, you have to switch your network to Covan and make sure that it's on there and you'll see it displayed right here. And it's pointed to the right account. So, I think we're ready. We just need to make sure that our contract here is pointed to the right contract. We don't want to deploy the interface that we're importing. We want to deploy the price consumer V3 contract, which is uh, you know right here. So we'll make sure that switch there and we're going to click deploy. It's taking its time trying to interact with MetaMask here. See what's going on. Yeah. Are you are are you guys able to see this MetaMask notification popping up? Mark. Well, the, the, if you can't, there is a MetaMask um, um, notification popping up right here. And basically it's just asking me to confirm the deployment of this contract. 
And you know, you need to pay a little bit of gas and ETH, but since this is on testnet, this isn't real money. Um, just click confirm. And it is pending the contract deployment. We have to wait a second here. That takes time to be confirmed on the blockchain. And we see here we have the deployed contract, the price consumer V3. If we um, open that up, we see we have that method that we have here, right here, uh, get latest price. And if we click on it, it should show the latest ETH USD price um, reported onto the Covan testnet. So fingers crossed, let's click on it. And bam, we have uh, you know $3,778 um, on there. And it's that simple, you know, we, we got the latest price um, on the Covan testnet. And if you wanted to take this price, you know, you could store it in a, in a state variable and have logic trigger when this method is run or um, do whatever you want with it. So that's kind of a, a quick introduction to data feeds on using Remix. It's, they're quite easy to use and, you know, they're already vetted and secure. So this is definitely um, the most used chain link product. So let's go ahead and go to using VRF now. Um, so we're going to go down to using randomness because um, that's what the VRF does. Gets us a random number. And we're going to click on get a random number. It's going to explain to us kind of how VRF works. We'll go through all of this. Um, and we will, again, click this, deploy this contract using Remix button. Awesome. So let's move this out of the way. Um, we have that now, that VRF um, contract on uh, Remix. And kind of explaining how that works again, you know, we have the pragma, we have our import, and this time we're importing the VRF consumer base, which is what you're always going to import when you need to use the VRF. And um, this contract is called random number consumer. It has three state variables, three bits of information, three parts of information we're storing, the key hash, the fee, and the random result. Now, luckily, our constructor is set to initiate all of these at the proper values to get um, a random number on Covan. So the VRF coordinator set, link token address, key hash fee, all of that's great. Um, so how the VRF works, unlike the data feeds, which um, follow a, a push um, architecture where you just have the values there available to you to use, you actually have to request the random number from the VRF. So we have this function, get random number. This is the function you're gonna to run to say, hey, I want a random number from the VRF. It'll send a request to the VRF and then the VRF will send back a random number. Now the random number the VRF, um, the random number the VRF sends back is going to be on the fulfill randomness function. This is only gonna be used by the VRF this is where it will send the random number. And this is where you can put all the interesting logic you may want to use um, with that random number. So again, you know, we're going to follow the same steps. You're going to get uh, really used to this. Uh, compile the random number consumer. Again, um, no red flags, no red warnings here. So we're good to go. Switch to the Ethereum diamond symbol, the, de the deployment tab. Switch to injected web three. Connected to my MetaMask again. And we are going to deploy. So this actually requires, to deploy requires two methods going into the, okay, I see, because it's all, I forgot to switch my contract to random number consumer. So don't forget to do that. Sometimes Remix uh, messes up and points to the wrong contract. Again, uh, happens all the time to me. So yeah, just make sure that this contract here 
random number consumer is the same as the contract you want to deploy. Um, so yeah, we can just click deploy. MetaMask opens up with a notification saying, hey, you want to pay some gas to deploy this? We're going to confirm. And it's going to take it a second and boom, there we go. We get the random number consumer deployed to Covan. And awesome. So we have our random number, get random number function, which again, we'll request that random number. Fulfill randomness, we don't need to touch that. Um, that only the VRF needs to use that. And our random result. So if we click on random result, right now it's going to be zero because we haven't actually stored any data into this variable yet. If you look into the fulfill randomness method, it actually takes that random number and stores it there. So after we call the VRF, we should have a num random number stored there. So let's go ahead and, and call get, ra get random number. Oh, so you see, you're gonna get this error. Why are you gonna get this error? So remember I said that VRF has a different architecture from data feeds. Uh, we have to pay, we're making a request to the VRF and we need to pay the VRF for our services. And of course we pay that using link tokens. So we actually need to send link tokens to this contract we just deployed. So it can make a request to the VRF and pay for our services and we can get our random result. So you're gonna click this, um, little icon here, which will copy the address of our deployed contract to the clipboard. And we are gonna go to MetaMask, go to assets, and we'll click on uh, the link token here. <clears throat> we'll click send, and we'll paste our uh, contract address. It only takes 0.1 link. I'm just gonna send it one link to be simple. Um, click next, confirm. Again, anytime you're making a transaction with a blockchain and it changes state, you're not just reading information, you're gonna have to pay some gas. And again, this is all testnet funds. So these link tokens can just be obtained from a faucet. They're not actual value while you're on testnet. But if you do do any of this on mainnet, you know, these will all be real funds. So be careful. Okay, so it says that our link transaction has been sent to the contract. So now when I click get random number, we should get a regular MetaMask notification. Bam, perfect, we have. I'm gonna click confirm. And now it says that our transaction has been included in the blockchain. So the VRF should get our notification. Now you see it's still zero. So the VRF actually has to wait a little bit. It needs to read um, the fact that the request has been sent to the blockchain, which takes some time. And then it needs to respond and have its transactions included in the blockchain, which takes a little time. So it may take a couple of seconds for our random results to pop up here. Just give it a little bit. It can take a couple of blocks. Still not popping up. You know, it can take up to a couple of minutes. So if it doesn't pop here right now, I will go ahead and, um, you know, we can come back and see that, that the random result is there. Okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, we, we're gonna move on to uh, keepers next, uh, but we can come back. But that is VRF. Um, you know, it's highly suggested that you use uh, something like VRF if you're trying to use any kind of randomness on the blockchain. Because again, um, randomness on the blockchain is gameable through most methods and can break the guarantees you're trying to give your users. And, um, you know, no one wants that. And yeah, see, that was enough time. Now we have the random results. Um, it's this really large number. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to do anything with this random number, you could. Awesome, so let's move on to the next product, which is Chainlink Keepers. Pick that up for now. So again, I'm walking this through the docs because I just want 
everyone to see like, you know, how easy it is to use the docs and, um, you know, anyone can um, just kind of come here and easily quickly deploy a contract if you want to test with some of the Chainlink tech. So we're going to go to using uh, Chainlink Keepers here. And this is going to tell you how to make a contract that is compatible with Keepers. So you're going to say what makes Keepers diff see what makes Keepers different from anything is that Keepers um, has kind of two steps. So first, we're going to go into the smart contract step. So deploy this smart contract again. All right. So earlier when I was talking about Keepers, uh, I kind of discussed this one use case where um, a function is run every so often. Um, in this case, that's exactly what this example contract does. So again, this time we're importing the Keeper compatible interface. So now that allows our contract to use Keepers. And this contract is going to be relatively simple. It's, we're gonna tell it how often in seconds um, to execute a, a function. And we'll tell it that when we deploy it. And so check upkeep is where you put the logic you want the keepers nodes to actually um, check to see if they should run a function, right? So in this case, it's gonna look at the difference between the current block timestamp here and the last timestamp, make sure it's greater than that interval you, um, you specified when you deployed it and then uh, performed upkeep. If, if it sees that um, the conditions have been met. And you can put any conditions you want. Again, this is a time-based smart contract. <laughs> so um, in this case, and all it's gonna do when, it, when the keepers perform the upkeep, they're gonna increment a counter by one, this counter variable here. A uh, check up, upkeep isn't actually run by the nodes. They run it virtually in their own environment. So this, this method never actually has to be run. Um, so don't worry about running that. So again, we'll follow the same steps we did the previous three times. We'll go ahead and compile it. Oh, there we go. So we got it compiled. Everything is good. No warnings. We'll go to the Ethereum diamond symbol, switch the environment to injected web three, connect to the Covan. Um, Again, make sure that this is um, pointed to the right contract. We don't want the interface. We want the counter contract that we have displayed here. And this time we can't just straight up deploy it by clicking the deploy button. Our constructor here requires us specify an interval. How often do we want it to update? I'm gonna put five right there in that box. Uh, five seconds. That means the, the, the keepers will monitor this smart contract and every five seconds run perform upkeep, which increases our counter by one. So we'll click deploy, confirm. All right, so we have our contract deployed. It stores some information in here already. Our interval is maybe small, but it's set to five as we set it when we deployed it. Our counter is zero because perform upkeep hasn't uh, run at all yet. And that's what the counter defaults to. Um, and that kind of finishes our smart contract portion of using keepers. The next portion is we need to register this contract on the keepers smart contract itself. So we need to register it and tell the keepers, hey, this contract is on, on the um, Covan testnet and it's ready to be monitored. And all this of course is done in a decentralized way. We're gonna go ahead and register this contract for upkeep. So you can click here on this button to go to the Chainlink Keepers app. And it's trying to detect my MetaMask. My MetaMask is being a little extra slow today for some reason. Let's try refreshing the page. Oh, getting a bad 
SSL error on here. Let's try it again. All right, there we go. This time it's working. So we'll connect our wallet up, up at the top right. Connect. All right. So this is the Ch Chainlink Keepers UI um, self-service portal for registering your contracts for upkeep. And I, I don't know why we keep eating this SSL error. It's probably because I have HTTPS everywhere active. Let me go ahead and turn that off and see if this helps. Click register new upkeep. Awesome. So um, you need to fill out this form. Um, we just put my email address in here, Zach at chainlinklabs. Com. Put the upkeep name, we'll call it counter test. Now we need the address of the contract we want to monitor. And again, to get that, we can come to remix, click on this, um, click on this copy to clipboard icon right here to get that address. Paste that there. Then on the gas limit, we're gonna wanna put it, we'll put it at um, 200,000, which is safe for this. This is something, um, if as you become more familiar with um, Ethereum, making smart contracts, you'll get used to, but um, you know, if the method requires more gas than this, then 200,000, then the keepers won't run. So you wanna make sure you, Really put this as the highest amount of gas you think that the perform upkeep method will take. And we're gonna go ahead and fund our um, contract. Let's go ahead and put it, our, our, reg our upkeep with 30 link. Because again, we need to pay the keepers and link to run. So if we run out of link in this contract, now to pay the keepers, they won't run anymore. And you'll need to top it up with more link tokens. So go ahead and click register upkeep. And since this is all done on the Ethereum blockchain, MetaMask is gonna come up, ask us to confirm. And, you know, the transaction is being mined. And once this transaction is included, which it is, um, we can click view upkeep. And, you know, it's active, it has our 30 link in it. If we fall below uh, basically 15 link, keepers will stop. And, you know, we can come back and we can come back, try to come back to this at the end of the demo and see that our counter has incremented. You know, it should start incrementing in uh, five minute, uh, five second intervals, but it's gonna take a, a couple of minutes to get started up. So that kind of concludes the remix portion of this. Um, I see I'm kind of uh, getting crunched on time, so I want to go ahead and move to hard hat. I just want to mention the any API solution we have. So if you find that you're developing with uh, Chainlink and the data that you want isn't already available in a feed, um, you can use any API, which allows you to go through the Chainlink, uh, a Chainlink node and connect to any API you want. And you can kind of customize uh, your request and what you want to do with the API. Do you want to get data from the API? Do you want to post data to the API? Um, any API is a really powerful tool, especially when you're developing, like I said, an application that doesn't already have a feed, but you want to create a proof of concept. Um, I really uh, suggest taking a look at the docs on how to use any API. Similar to VRF, API is a, a pull architecture. So you have to make a request to a node, pay them in link, and then they provide you whatever data you need from that API or to make any changes to that API. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to Hardhat. So deploying with Hardhat. What is Hardhat? We mentioned it earlier in the presentation. Um, Hardhat is a JavaScript framework that makes it easy to create, deploy, and test smart contracts in something called a local ID or integrated developer environment. You can think of it as basically it's Remix, but 
on your local computer. And it allows us to write smart contracts on the local computer instead of the web browser, which is what a lot of developers are more traditionally used to. Um, it has a lot of cool tests, uh, make, makes it easy to create and run tests on your smart contracts and create scripts. Um, you know, local development environments, again, are, you know, kind of traditional in the development world. And um, there are others such as Shuffle and Brown, but today we'll be using Hardhat. So what you'll need to run Hardhat. Um, you'll need an Infura account. This will allow Hardhat to connect to an Ethereum node. Uh, Git. Git allows us to clone the Chainlink Hardhat starter kit. Uh, Node.js and NPM. This is the runtime uh, for Hardhat and Visual Studio Code, which is how we're going to actually write our code. So to start with Hardhat, we're going to go ahead and go to the Hardhat starter kit on the GitHub, which I have linked right here. So you have the hard hat starter kit right here. Um, you can see all of the code here. It's all open sourced um, and how it works and a readme where it instructs you on how to, how to actually set up the hard hat environment locally. It's actually pretty easy once you get all the applications, all the other things I, I talked about installed, but we're gonna run through that in a bit. So we'll go ahead and go to code, this code button right here, and you're gonna see clone. And this is a link so we can clone the repo using Git. You're gonna copy that. Now, we're gonna minimize this screen. You're gonna to go to your terminal, and if you have uh, Git installed on your computer, you're gonna to wanna to switch to the directory you actually wanna save the starter kit. So I'm gonna I'm going to change my directory to documents. So I'm in the documents directory now, and I'm gonna type git clone, and I'm gonna paste in that um, that link that we just copied. You're then gonna hit enter. I'm not because I've actually already cloned this for us uh, before the demo started. So we can um, clear that out. Um, okay, so once you've cloned it, that will create the starter kit in your, um, in your documents directory or wherever you decide you want to save it. And you're going to want to open Visual Studio Code right here. Now, I already have the starter kit open, but, you know, if you wanted to open it, you would just go to File, go to Open. And, you know, we'll go to documents and you see that the hard hat starter kit is right there. So then you would just open the whole starter kit. Once we're in here, um, you're going to want to run a command npm install. This will have the starter kit bring in all of the too big there. This will have the starter kit bring in all of the packages it needs. And this takes a couple of minutes. So, you know, you hit enter after that, it, it brings in all the packages and uh, I'm not gonna run it. I've already run it again to save us some time. But um, yeah, that, that'll bring all of your uh, packages in. We then have our environment example. So hard hat, the hard hat starter kit needs to talk to the Ethereum blockchain somehow. And to do this, you're going to need what's called uh, RPC URL. So this is where the Infura um, URL comes from. And Infura has got a great website. You can go to their website and they walk you through. It's, it's a free setup. And you can get this uh, URL here for Covan. Um, that'll allow us to connect to the Ethereum blockchain and tell Hardout where to connect. You'll also want a mnemonic phrase for your wallet. Um, to do that, you know, if you're using MetaMask, you can come over here, you can go to MetaMask, you can go to 
settings, advanced. No, sorry, it's actually in. Yes, it's actually in security and privacy. And you can click reveal secret recovery phrase. Now I'm not gonna show you this because as it says, it's secret and you really need to make sure no one else sees this. If anyone sees your secret security mnemonic phrase, they can have complete control of your wallet. So it's very, very important not to reveal it to anyone, not to check it into GitHub or anything like that. So let's go back to VS Code. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so you can put these in this, uh, what's called an environment uh, file, a .env file. This is an example, because of course I don't want to share any of my information, uh, but you see right above .env example on the left, I have the regular .env file where I actually have my actual mnemonic and RPC available. Um, again, don't share it. I can't stress it enough. Um, if you have real money in there, people will take it. Okay, so now that we're in the hard hat starter kit, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly give you an overview of everything I laid out. If you have, you see the contracts folder here. And in here, you'll see all of those same um, Solidity contracts that we, we had in the Remix demos. They're the exact same code that we deployed to Remix. Uh, keepers aren't in here quite yet. We're working on getting those added. Uh, we have deploy scripts. These are the uh, JavaScript hard add scripts that actually go through and automate deploying our smart contracts, however we may want. Um, so they deploy the price consumer scripts, API consumer, random number consumer, all of those awesome deploy scripts. And the real power of hard hat comes involved in the tasks. So, you know, in Remix, when we wanted to run a method, it automatically created this uh, nifty UI where we could click a button and get the latest price or request a random number. Um, but when you're deploying, you have to do all of that in code. So these tasks allow us to automate all of those clicking of the buttons. Um, so for instance, if we click on tasks and we click on price consumer, we see we have a pre-built-in task here that will read the latest price. All right, and we have a bunch of other tasks, get the accounts associated with this wallet, fund everything with link. And finally, we have tests and we have some pre-built tests for chain link smart contracts specifically, you know, our API test, consumer test, and make sure your contracts are written good. You know, it's always good practice to write your tests as you're writing your code so you can make sure you have um, some good security in your contracts and everything is working as you intended. Okay, so that kind of covers the very basics of uh, hard hat and how it's laid out. Let's go ahead and do something, a basic task on here. We're gonna go ahead and deploy our contracts to the Govan testnet. So we're gonna, in the console, I'm gonna go ahead and type npx hardhat deploy. We're gonna say dash dash network because we wanna specify the specific network we're deploying it to and we're gonna say covan. And hit enter. I've already compiled it. So it's deploying, everything is deployed. And um, a lot of nifty things here. So we already had a task that auto-funded. So any contract that needed link tokens to work was auto-funded with link tokens for us. That's really, really handy. And it gives you some commands you can run from those tasks I showed you earlier in a easy to use way. So like, let's say we want, we deployed that price feed uh, contract, price consumer contract to the blockchain. And we want to run that read price feed task, well, it already shows you the exact command you need to run. NPX hard hat, read price feed, and it points it to that deployed contract and on Coven. So it's really convenient. You can just control C, go here, control V, hit return. It's reading the contract and boom, it tells us the price, just like we had on Remix. Um, and yeah, hard, you know, hard hat is really that easy. Once you get it cloned and going, you can find that it's really, really powerful. And this is 
can be said for all of our starter kits, as I said. Um, I mean, you could just make some really cool tests. Um, can run MPX hard hat test. This should run a couple of tests, give us some, you know, passing tests, some that it's waiting on. But um, yeah, this is this is hard hat. Love deploying and working in it, all of our starter kits. And this can really help you take your development um, of your projects to the next level. All right, well, I just want to say, say, you know, thanks for developing with Chainlink and thanks for being a part of the community and interested in all of this. Um, it's really all of you that make this possible. This is an open source project. So without an open source community and without developers developing with Chainlink, you know, the project really isn't doing much. So, you know, as always, just thanks for your interest. Thanks for developing. Um, if you ever need to reach out to me, um, you can find me on Discord. I try to go there at least, you know, a couple of times a week. And, uh, you know, you can ask me some technical questions there. If you have any technical questions, I actually suggest going to Stack Overflow first. Uh, we're pushing a lot of people there. You can find a lot of questions about Chainlink that have been asked there. We have a tag. And, uh, of course, the documentation is always open. And I suggest everyone check that out. So I don't know if we um, wanted to open the floor for some Q&A, but we have a couple of minutes. So I'm available for that. <laughs>